Thank you for joining me in our Strategies of Success WebEx series today. This WebEx is entitled Medical Record Management, the Who, Why, and Where of Chart Documentation. My name is Carolyn Parker and I'll be presenting the information on this topic today. Should you have any questions during this presentation, please feel free to submit them as you participate and I'll answer them at the end of the presentation. The medical record is a graphic record that is created for each patient at his or her medical office visit. In today's complicated health environment, it is a key instrument used in planning, evaluating, and coordinating patient care in both the inpatient and outpatient settings. The content within the medical record is essential for patient care, accreditation, and for reimbursement purposes as well. Standardization of documentation and what key components are required within the medical record will be the focus of today's WebEx. The information provided in this training module is not intended to be legal or medical advice. It is recommended that participants not rely on this general guide in structuring or analyzing individual transactions, but that professional advice be sought in connection with any such transaction. Nothing herein is the official position of Allegiant Creighton Health. Within this WebEx, I'm going to be focusing on basic requirements, documentation guidelines, nursing documentation, blank spaces, signatures, medication errors, medication logs, amending your notes, and patient calls and drug rep, rep samples. Um, this WebEx topics actually came along because there was a practice that was requesting and more information of trying to standardize their processes within their office. If there's any topics that you would like as a practice to see that would benefit your practice, I'd be happy to um, do a lunch and learn with you and help you with that, as well as I will turn them into a WebEx to benefit other practices as well. Some of the basic requirements. Well, whether the documentation is computer-based or handwritten, the requirements remain the same. Clear and concise documentation finished within an appropriate time frame and based on first-person observations reflects responsible professional judgment. Nursing documentation includes the facility's choice of forms and the adherence to procedures and policies set by the facility. When legal issues arise, the nursing documentation becomes a central part of proving whether the standards of care were met or not. The medical records should be complete and legible. I don't know how many of you actually have um, physicians or nurses or other mid-level providers that may write, scribble and write like this, but this is real documentation. Uh, and good luck reading it. <laughs> and all of these general guidelines come directly from the Department of Health and Human Services, their Evaluation of Management Services Guide from December 2010. The other thing that's required is a reason for the encounter and a relevant history, physical examination findings, prior diagnostic test results. You can't just say, well, same reason as before. Um, assessment, clinical impressions or diagnosis, medical plan of care, and date and legible identity of the observer. Other necessary items, well if it's not documented the rationale for ordering diagnostic and other ancillary services, it should be easily inferred. Past and present diagnoses should be accessible to the treating and or the consulting physician. And the appropriate um, health risk factors should be identified within the medical record as well. A patient's progress, response to and changes in treatment, and revision of diagnosis should be documented. And diagnosis and treatment codes reported on the health insurance claim form or billing statement should be supported by the documentation in the medical record. It is required or requested by the OIG that you do audits with on your medical records and you should compare them to what was billed out. That's what they're going to be looking for, not only the diagnosis codes, the CPT codes, making sure the time is noted um, and the details necessary to support whatever you've billed to the insurance companies. Your nursing documentation 
You might call this an intake form. Practice that I was meeting with, I called it a circle sheet. There's all kinds of names for this. Um, you want to document your assessment of the patient's current condition and medical history, including their family's medical history. You want to chart the patient's vital signs, pain scale, and usual medications. Under the history of present illness, it must be current information as to what pertains to the patient's visit. Again, you can't just write same as before. That is not acceptable. So these are some of the things that you could have within that intake form when you're first meeting with the patient. You want to make sure you write legibly and use only clinic approved abbreviations to avoid errors. Abbreviations for some medications can look and sound similar, which can result in disastrous consequences to the patient. If you're in doubt when charting, avoid writing abbreviations. Instead, spell out the full name of the medication. If you made a mistake, draw a line through that mistake and avoid writing over any entry, especially digits. For example, vital signs or medication doses and amounts. You want to write mistaken entry. The difference between this, from a legal standpoint, the, word, the use of the word error when charting can imply that the nurse made a mistake. So you, but you do want to check your clinic's guidelines and regarding the correct wording to use. And you should have a policy on this for nursing documentation for standardization within your clinic. Whiteout is never permitted. Uh, start a new page rather than try to squeeze in notes at the bottom or at the sides of a page. And also in nursing documentation, you want to make sure that you write your first initial followed by your last name and title when you're signing. And although script writing and block print are acceptable when charting, only script otherwise known as cursive writing, is acceptable for signatures. Avoid the use of sticky notes or unattached slips of paper, which can be separated from the chart. I've seen some practices that they'll tape them in there or they'll staple them in there. Um, that's also not really recommended because those can also be removed. But if it happens, you just that's the risk that you're going to take. You also want to have a um, physician's log that has all the signatures of all the physicians within your practice available as well. Blank space on a form does not always signify a negative response. May indicate parts of an exam, for example, were not done. So you want to make sure that you fill in or avoid all spaces for information on your forms and ask the office staff to review all forms that the patients will fill in like when they come to the front desk to ensure the forms are complete. Have them look them over before the patient goes back to get any questions answered. They should also be helping out to make sure no, um, none of those lines are uh, left blank. And the physicians really should not sign operative reports, discharge summaries, or other transcription before all these blanks within this documentation are filled in or you have a line crossed off because there isn't, it wasn't answered or in some way um, indicating that the question was at least acknowledged by the patient and not ignored. Where do you sign? Well, physicians must sign anywhere on the chart where they've reviewed a patient information, results, or the nurse's notes. It does include patient questionnaires and the HMP forms. In the case of significant patient responses, the physician should make a note next to these items, or maybe they can refer to them in their progress notes, but it has to be documented. And it has to indicate the patient's responses were discussed and considered. Legal issues in nursing documentation regarding medication records and the med medication errors, well, they're very common. When the wrong drug is administered, the wrong dose is given, or the wrong mode of administration is used, a medication error has occurred that can have serious consequences for the patient and for the nurse as well. Failure of the nurse to monitor the patient for an appropriate response to the medication, side effects, or toxicity can result in harm to the patient. Following the physician's orders does not protect the nurse from legal action if or when the patient is harmed. So it is the nurse's responsibility to provide a safe environment for her patient. Here's a form you might want to consider. It's called a medication control record. And within this, you'll have the patient name, their date of birth, phone numbers, allergies, the medications prescribed by other physicians, 
um, the patient's pharmacy and phone number. And then it also has listed here, as you can see, um, the completion date of when it starts, the name, the dose, the amount, the instructions, and refills, the staff signs off on it, as well as the physician. Um, if it's a sample, the quantity of it, this is a good form for drug reps, which we'll talk about later too. You really should be documenting when you give out drug rep samples as well. When amending notes, you need to include the date, time, and if the reason for the amendment are not obvious, you have to explain the change. You never want to amend or correct a medical record after you receive a potential audit. And deliberate altercation of a medical record is illegal and unethical, and it may subject the writer to criminal and or civil penalties, including the loss of the provider's medical license. Within patient calls, when they call into your office, sometimes they have phone nurses or they have people taking them in, you need to document significant phone conversations by putting down the date, the name, and the content. The office staff should document these calls in a consistent manner, so you really should have this part of a policy in your office as well. You should have space for the staff member or physician to document actions taken or directed by the physician in response to the patient's call. Document all patient calls even if the patient doesn't answer or if you have to leave a message. Now drug rep samples. Your documentation with drug rep samples should include the name, dosage, and quantity distributed to the patient. You need to include with the documentation of the prescription given in order to accurately reflect the total amount of the medication that was made available to your patient and keep a log of samples received and distributed to help back up your medical record. Other things you might want to consider when you're putting together a policy, you need to figure out, well, where are you going to put your informed consent? Some practices will put it in within their progress notes. Or an informed refusal of discussions. You can put this on, you know, on your initial intake form, um, or their noncompliance with taking medications or things like that. You can also put that there or other places. Um, evidence that the patient education was dispensed. Usually this goes in the nurse's notes. You can put them there. Office visit progress note form to include when to return. Most of the time this is at the front of the chart. It's sometime on an appointment list. Make sure you watch out because the physicians will sometimes try to write orders and things on the super bill, which they can't really do that um, because they're billing that information out. Um, you want to have a consistent place for your physicians and sit down with them and make sure they understand that this needs to be standardized in the case of an audit and have a policy on where all these things are documented. There are a lot more audits being taken place and they're really cracking down and if documentation has been done properly. And then uh, return to work or school orders also, you need to make sure that those are documented in the standardized location. Again, um, most of this comes from the Evaluation and Management Services Guide of December 2010, and then also from working with different practices and trying to help standardize their practice within their medical records. If you need any assistance or if you would like um, some help with process improvement or if you have other WebEx topics that you would like to have, just let me know. I'm open to suggestion. Um, if there's any questions, I'm now available at this moment to take some. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.